Every swarm collection is different. But these bees were hanging so temptingly behind the polytunnel that I thought I'd get the camera and show you how I do this job. These ones had only just settled here and the cluster wasn't as tight as they can get so I could have left them for later but long experience has taught me that when the weather is good and they already know where they're heading they could be gone again in no time. I could have dumped these on a sheet on the ground and let them walk up into a box but again these are a bit fresh for that I think. They're so newly out of their hive I suspect there would be chaos because they're still bonding as a new colony. After 40 years of beekeeping I'm still learning but you get a feel for it after a while. So anyway I decided to pop them directly into a box instead. This is one of my five frame swarm boxes. The important thing to notice is the mesh grid on the floor. It's made from an old Varroa mesh floor but it's there entirely for ventilation. A cluster of bees can overheat and suffocate very quickly so ventilation is absolutely vital. The frames I'm using have just a starter strip of wax in them. Well, actually there's a bit of old wax in there too. Um, we'll see what the bees think of that. Now the trick of course is to get all the bees into the box but the frames themselves would be in the way. But if I take the frames out then the new comb that they build will be attached to the top board and the walls and that's not what we want. So I compromise, I take out the frames, put the bees in and then put back three frames for now. That's the plan anyway. I first tried bending the tree over so I could reach them but it was too stiff and I risked catapulting them spectacularly across the field. So I went for the step ladder instead. You can't see it but I'm wobbling at the top of the ladder here. This is why the box isn't any bigger, it's awkward enough as it is. For really big swarms I have to use a whole 12 frame box but that has to stay on the ground because it's just too awkward and heavy. See what I mean about the cluster not being very tight? Quite a few flew off immediately. I find that a day old cluster or older or one that's had wind or rain on it stays in one solid lump when you knock them down. You see even a cluster of bees is constantly changing. It's all so interesting. Anyway, um, quite a lot of bees did end up in the box. Let's hope the queen's in there too and the others will all go back to their original hive very soon. That's one of the advantages of collecting early, the stragglers go home, whereas stragglers from an older cluster will mostly go back to the cluster site and sit there miserably for days. So back on the ground I knock the bees to the bottom of the box, quickly add the three frames and put the lid back on. The lid is held in place with pieces of old bicycle inner tube. Because these bees are going to be living here and not going to an out apiary, I have to keep them confined for a couple of days at least. So I leave them in the coolest part of the barn, making sure that they are off the ground so the ventilation is not hindered. And then, after two or three days, some would say that's not long enough but I find it is, I move them to their new position in the cool of the evening and in the 
early morning I open the door and leave them alone to find their new bearings. Later that afternoon I open them up to add the two missing frames and this is the time to learn about the Queen. If it's the old Queen from the hive she would usually be laying already in the new comb that they're building for her. Whereas if this was a cast swarm or a secondary swarm where the Queen is a virgin of course she would need mating first before you'd see any eggs. <laughs> That's normally what you'd expect but just to prove that bees are more complicated than that this queen is not doing what I was expecting. Bees huh? They're the best but they'll always confound you one way or another as part of the joy of beekeeping. Everybody be nice. In fact, I know that this has to be an old queen in here because the hive that the swarm came from wasn't big enough to have this size swarm as a cast. So although it wasn't a big swarm, this was definitely the first swarm from the hive. So the queen has to be the original queen and she should be laying already, but she isn't. That's just honey in the combs. Now. <laughs> <laughs> the bees wouldn't be building comb like this if the queen had been lost. So I'm sure she's in here and confident that she's just taking her time. Now I could look for her but there's no particular point and I don't want to distress them any more. So I just add the extra frames and leave them alone again. You see, that's the reason I use these little boxes. The same box that I caught the cluster in is now their permanent home and will last them for a few weeks at least. They seem to prefer a box that's not too big anyway. Of course you could catch a cluster in a cardboard box or anything really. I used a suitcase once. But then they'd need moving on again into a hive. So that's just one more disruption for them. Do will go down and I can fit the lid on. Be best, isn't it? Here we are again a month later and let's see how they're doing. All appears to be well. This brood pattern confirms she's an old queen and will probably be superseded later on in the year. But there's plenty of worker brood that's just about to start hatching and they're going to need a bigger box pretty soon. There's so much to learn from even this little colony. The way they build their comb and the pattern of their eggs tells us so much. And I really do love these little Irish bees. Not the friendliest, but perfect in every other way. Well done girls, you're going to need a new box aren't you?